The range of sound coming from the piano was more or less constant until John Cage created the prepared piano by introducing different objects that were placed between or on the strings, hammers, and dampers. These outside components altered the piano's harmonics and added a whole new gestalt of sound to the world of music. In a similar way, the dancer who performs my work has a prepared body. Although I am not referring to movement training, physical strength, or prowess, a question crafted by me is introduced to a dancer who then directs that linear experience into the nonlinear assemblage of his or her cellular body. The attractiveness of the question redirects the dancer's attention away from his or her inherently choreographed body, making room for new movement behavior to arrive, to arise. And then just one more way in which I have been reorganizing myself in terms of my research uh, of the body is this, uh, turn your fucking head. It's the only movement direction that I've ever given in any of my classes. It's the only, it's the only specific movement direction I've ever given. And I want to read you, but I'll read you some of what I wrote about it. Um, turn your fucking head is the single movement direction used in the practice of my work. It is meant to disrupt beliefs that what I am doing matters, whether or not I am conscious that I have this belief. In the context of my work, what matters is not what I am doing, but how I am choosing to engage in the moment. Turn your fucking head came like a shot out of hell as I watched myself on video. Because other people were in the room, I kept the ongoing entreaty to turn your fucking head, Deborah. <laughs> I kept it to myself because there were other people in the room. I was dancing as if I could control all the elements of my performance if I just held my head still enough. It was painful to observe but I became, it, it was a turning point in my understanding of performance, particularly in relation to my work. <clears throat> the regal head is endemic to dance and theater practitioners. As artists, as I would say as performing artists, we need to prove we are serious and responsible citizens of the world. Committed <laughs> to our respective art forms, <laughs> who know what we are doing and want the audience to know this too. This need to assert our value in society lodges in the head like a fortress, unwilling to surrender. It's this. <laughs> and it's this head that, I mean, so I, you just look at, I, you look at 92% of dance that's mm -hmm. happening. And this is, and it's, it's painful. I mean, we have to show that I am in charge. I know just what I'm doing. I am command. You know, you are the audience. I am here. I have worked very hard <laughs> to learn this dance. I mean, it's like, it's like, it took years for me when I saw that to, to let go and to, uh, the, the, the other fantastic thing about it, it's not just turning your head, you're turning your head and I'm, what, what information is this and that information? All of this, all of this, this change of the visual field, how it affects my body, it's fantastic. I don't have to do anything. I just have to open my eyes and be open to seeing and letting go of what I see at the same time and you know, being served by my visual field. Yeah. So re major reorganization still going on. Lot to lot to learn from it. Okay. 
So then we have, we, everybody see this chart? This? Come here. These are the ways in which um, I have been reorganizing myself in relationship to space. And it's, it's kind of chronological. This one here is when, as a, as a 